Let's see if you can solve the following riddle. Bob is married to Alice, who is George's daughter. Alex is George's son. How is Alex related to Bob? You may have successfully identified that Alex is Bob's brother-in-law. But can you tell me exactly how you did it? Well, I think you'll agree that it's really tough to explain the concrete logic behind the solution. You just sort of mentally walked along this tree of relations, from Bob to Alex, and then returned back to Bob using the shortest path, which you identified as being the brother-in-law. Now when I put it this way, perhaps you won't be surprised that to solve this riddle, you engaged exactly the same brain structure which you use to construct the shortest route from your house to the nearby shop. What I've just described is a problem with a really high level of abstraction, which is unique to primates. But a variety of other social animals, such as mice and bats, also have evolved a sophisticated brain circuitry dedicated to social interactions. And the circuitry I'm referring to is the hippocampus, a brain structure which we have talked quite a number of times on this channel. In this video, we will see how the hippocampus represents other individuals and relationships, ultimately building a social map. If you're interested, stay tuned. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that I now have a Patreon account. So if you'd like to support the channel, I would really appreciate it. In the future, it will include additional benefits, such as bonus content, and the ability to vote and suggest video topics. You can find more details by following the link down in the description. Now, back to the video. It is believed that the initial function of the hippocampus, when it first evolved, was to carry out efficient computations in the environment. For example, to memorize the location of a nest, or build efficient routes to food sources. In other words, it operated in a purely physical space. But over the course of mammalian evolution, the hippocampus got repurposed to operate with other, more abstract variables, not just physical space. And one of such new jobs of the hippocampus is really prominent in social animals. To them, other conspecific individuals is an important aspect of outside world. So it makes sense to embed information about them into the existing map of physical space. Let's call this stage social information in physical space. Finally, if we increase the level of abstraction even further, which is the case for humans, we can expect a complete detachment of social information from the physical environment. After all, we can navigate the network of our friends while sitting still on the couch with no one around. This is navigation in a purely social space. In this video, we are going to gradually increase the level of abstraction and look at examples from recently published papers how hippocampus is involved in representing social information at each stage, beginning with purely physical space. This is the most ancient type of computation, which has really sparked the decades of hippocampal research in the first place. I have a dedicated video on the spatial processing in the hippocampus. If you have already watched it, or if you are familiar with the concept of place cells and you don't need a reminder, feel free to skip this part. For all the rest, let's make a brief overview of why hippocampus has earned all the hype. The most important idea is that inside the hippocampus there are these special pyramidal neurons which are selective to physical location. These neurons, which were termed place cells, are activated whenever the animal is in a specific location in the environment, referred to as the place field of that cell. Place cells can tile the entire environment, forming a neural substrate to perform spatial computations, such as memorizing paths and calculating efficient routes. This internal representation of the environment tiled with place fields is called a cognitive map. However, it may seem unclear how this purely spatial representation could be adapted to represent other kinds of information. I mean, what would place fields even look like when there is no physical ground? Let's go one step further on our ladder of abstraction 
and see what happens to the cognitive map when we add other conspecific individuals, that is, the animals of the same species, to the environment. Can we expect the internal model of the world to expand in order to somehow include other individuals? Well, in a variety of social animals, such as mice, bats and primates, that is indeed the case. This is described in a beautiful paper, published by a group of researchers from a lab led by Nahum Ulanovsky, where they studied how the bat hippocampus represents the position of others. Essentially, bats were trained in pairs to perform an observational learning task. One bat, let's call it the demonstrator, would first fly from the starting ball to either of the two landing balls, A or B. Another bat, the observer, then would have to fly to the same ball, essentially imitating the path of the demonstrator in order to receive the reward. In this case, the observer bat would probably need to track the position of another individual. Let's see what happens inside the brains of observer bats when they perform this task. Given what we have already seen for the mapping of physical space, how do you think? What will the activity of hippocampal neurons in the observer bat look like? Well, there is always a zero hypothesis that adding new bat would make no difference. But I wouldn't be making this video if that were the case, would I? Indeed, they discovered neurons which are selectively tuned to the position of the demonstrator bat and term them as social play cells. So the hippocampus has the capacity to track the location of another individual in the same way as it maps the position of self. A more interesting question, at least to me, is what is the nature of these social play cells? What is their relationship with purely spatial play cells, which are also there, representing the route when the observer bat itself starts to fly? And what happens to the activity of social play cells when there is no other bat? But before I give you the answer, let's try to think about possible scenarios. The first hypothesis is that these two subsets of neurons, spatial and social play cells, are completely distinct. Each is active in only one of the scenarios. So a conventional spatial play cell represents the position of self when the bat is flying and stays completely silent when it hangs still, observing the demonstrator. A social place cell, on the other hand, reliably represents the position of a demonstrator bat and doesn't activate during the flight of the self. This division of labor makes sense, but perhaps can seem a bit redundant. After all, each neuron does nothing 50% of the time. Another possibility is that a pyramidal neuron can switch its roles, functioning as a social play cell during the period of observation, but mapping the position of self during the flight. In other words, it has a place field in both spaces, the location of self and location of a demonstrator, depending on the current task. If this is indeed true, what are the possible relative positions of these two place fields? Are they similar or dissimilar? For example, let's say that during the observation, a neuron spikes whenever the demonstrator bat is in the middle of the path leading to the ball A. When the observer bat, the one we are recording from, takes off, where can we expect this self-place field to be? At the beginning, middle or end of the path A? And what if the bat makes a mistake? and flies to the ball B instead. Can we expect this neuron to activate somewhere on the path B during the flight? Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of questions at you instead of giving concrete answers. The thing is, when carrying out an experiment, this is exactly the type of situation you face as a researcher. Ok, by now you probably had enough time to make your predictions. So let's get back to the paper. It's very common in science, when you are choosing between two extreme hypotheses, the truth turns out to be somewhere in the middle. And this is also true for this case. There are place cells that are either purely spatial or purely social. But there are also some neurons 
which exhibit this type of switching and whose activity depends on the task. And these neurons show a whole continuum from congruent cells, when the spatial and social place fields are very similar, to non-congruent cells, when they are dissimilar. This indicates that information about physical contents of outside world and the social aspect is encoded in neurons in a conjoined manner, with one cell often having different specializations depending on the context. Interestingly, if you do a similar task, but when the bat has to follow an inanimate object, you'll see that at the level of single neurons, other bats are represented differently from inanimate moving objects. It means that the hippocampus doesn't merely treat the other bat as the object to follow. The fact that it is a conspecific individual affects its representation inside the mental model of the environment. It points in the direction that other aspects, such as the context of social interactions and potential mating, are explicitly interwoven into the map of external world, along with physical features, such as locations of rewards and obstacles. But what if we remove the space completely? To do this, we are going to increase the level of abstraction one step further to the point which is only humans and other higher primates are capable of. In our daily life, we often use metaphors like he is close to me or she is above him in this social context. Could it be that it's more than just a figure of speech? Perhaps the social space inherits the neural substrate from its more ancient physical counterpart. To investigate how the brain tracks social interactions in humans, a group of researchers, led by Daniela Schiller, developed a choose-your-own-adventure game, in which subjects had to interact with fictional characters to find a new home and a job. Activity of their hippocampus was monitored through fMRI, or functional magnetic resonance imaging. Essentially, characters in this game form a two-dimensional social space, with the two main axes being the power or the degree of dominance and authority, and affiliation or the measure of intimacy and trustworthiness. For example, your boss would probably be located in the upper left corner with high power and low affection, while your grandma would probably be in the lower right. These are the two psychological dimensions which form the notion of social distance between different people from your point of view. Notice that it is an egocentric or subjective representation. Your boss would probably have much higher values of affection in the coordinate system of his wife than in yours. The game contains six characters, and as the storyline unfolds, participants interact with one character at a time by choosing between two responses. Each response either increases the power of affiliation by one, or decreases the metric by one. For example, if the boss asks you to stay later, you can either agree, which would give him plus one power in your social map, or you can demand or other additional payments, which would decrease his authority by one. This way, with every interaction, the position of each character in your two-dimensional map changes in discrete steps along one of the axes and we can trace the evolution of the character as their trajectory in the social space. Notice that since this is a two-dimensional plane, we can describe the position either using Cartesian coordinates x and y or polar coordinates by measuring the vector angle and its length. I won't go too deep into the rationale for switching to polar coordinates, but basically it has to do with the fact that power and affiliation in psychology are not really independent and orthogonal as X and Y would be. You can consult the paper for more details if you're interested. Anyway, in these polar coordinates, the vector angle measures the power modulated by affiliation, and its length is proportional to the absolute social distance between the two people. In this study, it was found that changes in the hippocampal activity of subjects correlated with the vector angle. 
and the strength of this correlation, how much the hippocampal activity predicts the movement in the social space, is higher in individuals with better social skills. These results suggest that the hippocampus may be crucial for social cognition and provide the necessary machinery to encode the social aspect of episodic memories. It also points in the direction that the hippocampal circuitry for spatial processing is utilized by humans to construct a social space and map out the position of individuals and distances between them. Alright, let's recap. In this video, we have seen how the hippocampus might have evolved to represent social interactions at different levels of abstraction. So the take-home message is that, despite how counterintuitive it might seem, we probably use the same mental machinery to navigate in social landscapes as we do for physical ones. And who knows what other functions this mysterious loopy structure might have that we just don't know about. The only way to find out is to keep looking while staying open to new ideas. Which brings me to the sponsor of today's video. Shortform is a platform which makes discovering and reading books much easier. They offer book guides or supercharged book summaries supplemented by related ideas from other sources. I believe this feature is a game changer because it allows you to get a more comprehensive perspective and promotes interlinking of different ideas. The existing library of books is quite impressive, covering a variety of genres, including science, technology and psychology. Additionally, new guides are being published every week. Don't hesitate to try Shortform by following the link down in the description to get 5 days of unlimited access and 20% discount on annual membership. If you liked the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and press like button. Stay tuned for more interesting topics coming up. Goodbye, and thank you for the interest in the brain.